What's up guys? Gary here for GMVFX. Welcome back to a new tutorial. Today we are uh, doing something that's a little bit different. Actually kind of modeling something based on something that's already been done, uh, which I kind of haven't done before. But it's um, it was more of a fact that I just saw something and I sort of went, how would I do that? And I thought of one way that didn't work and I thought of another way that didn't work. And then I kind of combined the two together and I came up with a solution. Let me explain. Um, I've recently been obviously looking around at other people's work on the internet and finding out some really cool stuff. And I came across the work of a wonderful 3D computer rendering artist called Matthew Barrett. And he creates the most amazing, beautiful, fractal-ish landscape, landscapes uh, with buildings on and trees and all sorts. But they're really, really, he generates these really big prints and sells them. And um, obviously there's a very, very limited number of these prints. And detail-wise, they're incredible. Let me show you what I mean. This is his uh, website. Let me just go to the top of the page quickly. Whoop, there you go. Um, he has got some, I say, amazing artwork. Um, he's done a bunch of, these, this is called Hiding Places, a bunch of high detail stuff. So you can see it feels very uh, solidly real, but at the same time, it also is all generated on a computer pretty much, as well as being digitally uh, done. There's also handwork on top of that. So he's, you know, he's a very, very talented guy. But particularly for me, I started looking on his blog at some of his Hinterlands exhibition and some of the other stuff that he's been having. And this I thought was beautiful. I really love it. It's a really beautiful piece of landscape. It dips down into the water. There's edges, there's castles, there's buildings. It's just stunning. And then I came through this and I was like, oh, there you go. That's lovely. That still feels, it still feels a little bit procedural, which is not a bad thing. I do happen to like procedural based stuff. But at the same time, it also feels very much hand dropped. I mean, there's a lot of places, a lot of elements in there that are probably used more than once, um, obviously, because I mean, it's stupid not to. Um, but the artwork is uh, it's just, uh, it is artwork. I mean, that's it. And I saw this and I was like, well, it may be the least artworky thing, but surely I can do that in 3D. And I thought about one way, which is with displacements and it almost, but not quite got there because I couldn't get the flatness. And then I tried again in geometry nodes and that time I tried it similarly with displacing. And again, that didn't quite go right, but I did find a solution and we're gonna do it now. So this is the kind of thing we're gonna generate. I've got some assets I'll bring through when I've towards the end, but let's just get into this as fast as we can. So I'm got, I've got a cube here. I'm gonna leave that cube there. I'm going straight to geometry nodes. I'm gonna add a new geometry node in and then I'm gonna go add. And because we're in 3.5, the menu system has changed. I can actually right click here and go add. So let's just do that. So let's go add and we'll go mesh. And we'll go primitives and we will go grid and I'll drop that here. And let's pop that into there. We can move this group people out of the way. We could delete it, but I don't want to. Uh, always feel a bit, <laughs> I've blown it away now. Um, so I'm gonna change this to 30 by 30 and 30 by 30. So we've got a bunch big bunch of vertices and we can see them there like this that's really nice there you go and what we're going to do now is we're going to add some displacement to it like we were just saying so i'm just going to right click here and go search and go set and then click on i've done it again set set and go set position and drop that there on this so this will allow us to do uh, an alteration to the position so what we're going to do in here is we're going to bring in a texture because we're going to use that texture this Voronoi to allow us to displace essentially um, displace the surface of the Voronoi now if I was to take this distance and just drop it into there we'll you'll notice that it's vanished where's it gone well the reason it's vanished it's not it's all gone to one pixel point in the middle uh, it's not registering the fact that you've got, actually also got the position it's just saying here's some Voronoi information just make it the position the moment you plug something into position you lose the base position. So what you have to do is add it to the position. The only way to do that is to add a node in here, which is position. So that will give you the positional data of your object. It'll say, just read the position stuff, then add it to the Voronoi and then put it into the position. So we need to add these together. So in order to do that, we have to go uh, um, add, and we are going to go to utilities, go to vector and go vector math and drop that here. And that's on additive. So we pop that into there, pop that into there. And then we put the distance and we pop that into there. And now we start to get what we want. And you can see already it's pointing everything. All the points are pointing um, in X, Y and Z. But that's we don't need all the information. We literally just want 
we just want the Z information. So what we're going to do is we're going to break that up. So we're going to separate out the vector information that's coming out of the Voronoi. Before we add it in, we're going to then combine it back together because it has to come out as a vector and it has to go in as a vector, but we need to separate it in between. Let's go add on the node. We're going to search and we will go sep and that gives us separate X, Y, Z. We'll then do the same here. Go add search and we'll go C O M B and we'll go with combine X, Y, Z. And now we can get the distance out of this, drop it into the vector, the distance out of that, drop it into there and then take the Z and the X and the Y. But we don't want the X and the Y. That's the problem. So we just disconnect those. We just want the Z. So now what we have here is the Voronoi is going into just the Z. That's great. So what I can do now is I can then scale this down to say 0.5. That's still too much 0.1. And there you can start to see we have the nice vectory stuff going on. There you go. You see, you can see it there. Let's just do it this way. Let's make this 60 and this 60. And so you can kind of see it better there now. Let's just my finger on shift. I'm going to pull this and just make it there. So we've got, there you go. So we've got some nice little bits of Voronoi. Uh, just bumping upwards in the Z, but it's not bumping up enough. So the best thing we can do now is to add, where are we? Let's go add, and we shall go uh, utilities and then math and then math. Click on that, it's on add, change it across to multiply. And at the moment it's multiplying by 0.5, which so makes it lower. So that was one, that's what it was before. Just going to set that to two. And now we're getting these kind of like nicely peaky kind of things that we wanted. Now, that's all well and good. That gives us that sort of like base land. But what I did then was I tried to add another Voronoi. And the moment you do that, you sort of like get, you, you can change the randomness on a Voronoi value to, to zero. I'll show you. If I just set this to zero, what we end up with is perfect little points in every single dimension doing exactly what you want. You change the randomness up as you get a little bit of little bit of breakage and a little bit of change in it and then you can push it even more and that's where the Voronoi comes from basically it's um a series of imagine think of it as a series of circles um of varying intensity outwards from the middle and so they're like grays and then if you push them around a bit into each other you basically push them so they're going at different angles this is where you generate that actual Voronoi I like it I like it a lot um so you can do all sorts of you know all sorts of things uh in between these two values if i wanted to i could say push them further up so i add in an add or i want to you can sort of do a clamp in fact i'm going to try and do the clamp now because I, I i remember it was um it did it was quite interesting as i recall uh let's do it over here add there we go uh let's go utilities go math math again or we just go a clamp pop the clamp in and there you go so see this is saying right my minimum value is zero maximum is one if I push that down a bit there and let me push this up, there you go. So you can kind of, you can set where the floor is, as it were, which I think is really clever. So if I just put this to 300 and 300, you know, you can really, if I don't turn off there, there you go. So you can really see what I mean by the clamping. You can have some, with with maths, you can do, uh, well, you can do everything with maths, it's great. So you can, like, there's, you can hint, there you see that, when you do it that way, you can kind of see the hint of the circles. If I push this, minimum value down let's say to there push the maximum up so we get like a little bit of kind of plateauing you can combine these sorts of values together and generate landscapes in fact the ant landscape you can use that to generate all the things that you'd be doing right now in geometry nodes and that's been in there for like forever so it's it's clever it's just clever stuff anyway we don't want that we want to get rid of that there you go so we've got this now and i've put it in a higher a higher mesh thing i'm just going to very quickly save this as and let's call it uh, mb underscore zero 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 so we've got it in there it's a nice little blend file um, i'm going to take this wireframe uh take sorry take this back to here i'm going to uh, i'm going to leave the wireframe back on i'm just going to turn this volume amount down though to 100 each so we can still see it and what i'm going to do now is the thing is everything there is fine displacement won't work so we have to use something else to put all these little boxes and stuff all over this landscape and that thing is going to be instancing we're going to make some boxes and we're going to instant them all over this landscape so let's do that let's go to layout let's have a little look but let's go to model and let's go to edit 
and I'm going to add in a mesh cube. There you go. Now you can see it. It's already far too big. Um, so what we're going to do is going to scale this down. So go into object mode, go S and bring it down so it's much smaller. And do you want to do anything else to it? Eh, I think we're going to maybe we'll do a couple of versions. Let's just rename this. Let's just call it BK.001. So like for BK for block, block, whatever. And I'm going to very quickly, I'm going to add, in fact, no, let's just do it this way. It's probably easier to do it this way. I'm going to select this top face, control B, and I'm going to bevel it. There we go. Object mode, and let's uh, duplicate this. And I'm going to move it over here. And if go to the top view, and so I can see it, let's just go to wireframe. There we go. And let's go to edit mode. I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to move this out to here. And I'm going to move this in to there. This in to there. Yeah, there you go. So we've got something that's a bit more rectangular. And let's just do one more. And so I'm going to take this one here and let's do Shift D and press Escape. And I'm going to bring it over here. And I think I'm going to create a lip on this one. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to pick the edges here. These uh, shift and then do that because I can't do not think. Let's go. There you go. We've just gone control delete. So I've now got a flat top and I am going to what shall I do? What shall I do? Uh, shall I create a lip on it or something? Let's maybe do that. So let's go back into edit mode just to be sure. And I'm going to pick the polygon top and I'm going to, in fact, let's do it this way. If I do it here, pop this up here like this. And then if we select these faces here, let's extrude along the normal. There we go. And edit, object mode. And let's go back into edit mode, select the edges. And I don't need this inner edge. I don't want that at all. Control delete. And that gives us the same thing, but with like four polygons less, which is nice because we're going to try and minimize the polygons essence, -y, essence on here. And I'm going to leave them. Let's just, um, let's just put them back into the middle. So you're not in the middle. There we go. They're all literally middle objects. Into edit mode, let's just, we've got all three. And I'm just going to bring them down about there. Okay, object mode. So there's more underneath than there is on top. And then here you go. This is where, this is where the madness lies. This is where the magic happens. So let's save this very quickly as MB001. And back in geometry nodes, we pick our grid and all of this stuff here, which I will uh, compress in. That's everything we needed to make our geometry uh, base. And here on out, let's add in the important bits. We need to add some points. So we go to point, distribute points on faces and pop that in there. Now, of course, we lose our object, but that's okay because it doesn't matter if we lose the object. We can come back to that. So here we are distributing faces on objects. And I am going to now add in here an input uh, group, uh, scene, collection info, put that there. And I'm going to add an instance, instances on points, pop that there. And I'm going to go instance and I'm going to look for my blocks. Okay, well, if I'm not careful, I'm going to do everything because everything's in one collection. So I need to make a new collection, call it BLK, and then take block to one, two, three, and drop those into BLK. Okay. And let's go back into here to our cube and I'm going to do this and go BLK. And now you can see our blocks are all there. Oh, look at that. Oh, and all lovely. But you'll also notice that we need to pick the instance and separate the children and reset the children. So they're all picking individual objects and they are all from the reset position as if they're all basically at zero, which they were anyway. So that's good. That is actually quite light. It's also uh, on a reasonably quick machine. Um, I am currently got a lot. I've got a loaner from Lenovo. I've got a workstation P620 from Lenovo, which has got um, 
a fantastic graphics card. It's got an AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5995WX CPU, which is running like a dream, and um, it is uh, particularly fast. I've also got an NVIDIA RTX A6000 graphics card, which we don't know is also right up there, and uh, along with 256 gigabytes of RAM. It's a beast, but it's a beautiful beast. Uh, it's uh, it's a workhorse. I will go into that at a deeper, much deeper, um, in my next uh, tutorial, which is going to be very, very much pared back because it's mostly going to be about the machine. Just so you know, this is not a paid promotion. This is not sponsorship. This is literally me being loaned a computer to talk about it and tell you how good it is. There is, and it is, it just is. But mind you, my, my paltry uh, uh, GeForce 1070 Ti, I thought was good enough. Uh, but this is making me realize it's just not even, I don't want to give the machine back. It's just, of course I'm going to. It's um, it's just beautiful. The speed of it is is phenomenal, if I'm brutally honest. Um, I've got to stop saying, if I'm brutally honest. If I'm brutally honest, I'm being brutally honest. Right, let me just get this to here. There we go, like that. So if I just pop this onto rendered view and deselect the object, do this. Uh, if I turn off the wires, let's turn off the wires again. Uh, so this is currently in this being rendered uh, with EV. Let's change it to cycles. There you go. So that's a cycles render, uh, not even with denoise, um, doing 1024 samples like it was born to do it. It's so quick. So you can see all these little blocks and that is very similar to what, what we what we wanted. Um, I am gonna carry on a bit more because I do want to carry on a bit more. I'm just gonna let very quickly take the light. Um, I should have done this before, change it to a sunlight so it's one. There we go. And let's change this. Let's make this a little bit yellower like this. I kind of like that. And it has that kind of like early morning kind of appeal as well, which I do. I do not do like I've always liked that. Let's go back to this light. Let's give it a strength of say 2.5. And let's um, this is the quickest way of, of, of resetting it. It's go to rotation so those to zero. And then we want to just angle it in the Y because the Y essentially is east and west. So that's that's good. So we can get this like nice early morning light sort of thing going on there. I like that. I'm a big fan of that. There you go. So that's all again, all happening in real time, practically. Oh, it's just so cool. Now, what we could also do, so we go back to our geometry nodes now. That's fine. Let's just turn it off so you can see. And also let's just go save because the machine's finally starting to make it sound like it's actually doing any work. <laughs> it's just such a beautiful machine. I wish I could have it. Um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change the density here to 30. And uh, actually, let's change it to 50. There we go. And again, you see, you can see it's still running relatively quickly. But one of the problems I've got there is there's such a uniformity going on. You can feel it in the rotation. You can feel it in the scale. So we need to make some changes to make it feel a little bit more randomized. So let's leave that there as it is. And I am now going to, in fact, let me just change, very, change it, very quickly change it back. Uh, to Eevee for the sake of argument in here. Uh, just, I mean, it's not a big deal in all honesty, um, but it, it might help. Um, let's uh, just uh, up these and up that to four and six. There you go. So you're starting to see some pools of shadows and whatnot in there, even with Eevee. And even that, that's just like too fast. Can barely cope with it, it's that quick. So let's add some more randomness into here. So what we need to do now is we need to do stuff to the instances, not to the random, not to the points, not to anything else. So we need to go and do some stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add into here a utility. I'm going to go to vector. I'm going to get some vector maths like this, which I probably don't need, but I'm going to have them anyway. And I'm going to go down to utilities and go to random value. In fact, let's leave that for now. I might, I'm going to come back to that. So I'm going to change this random value to a vector. And I'm going to set the minimum value here to 0.2 and the maximum to 1.5. I think that sounds about right. I'm going to plug that into scale. Here we go. Come on. There you go. There you go. So that's randomized the scale somewhat. If I just unplug that 
There you go. What I can do now is if I put this into here, change this to a multiply, I can set this value to one. So I can, if I want to, I can increase the values in certain directions on the models. But again, you'll see this kind of like, it kind of feels all a bit sort of like stringy strippy, which is actually, I quite like that. Um, but you can, you can control a little bit more of what the random value is. So you get the random value, but then you can adjust it. Now, this is where it becomes interesting because I also want to basically rotate these things because at the minute, and this is where I love maths, I'll be honest with you, because at the minute, they're all basically still paint rotated at zero. Now, I want to have these rotated between 90, 180, 270, and zero. So what I need to do is I want to make it so that I can rotate each of these independently because if I, if I rotate this in the Z by 90, you know, you can, you can see they're all rotating individually, but still doing zero to 90. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce into this another random value. Okay. So I'm going to go, let's go add utilities, uh, random value. I pop this here. I'm going to change this to uh, an integer. Set the maximum value to four. Actually, let's set the maximum value to three. And you can see here, basically, that an integer is a value of fixed, not floating point value. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, not 1.4, 2.6. 3.9, it's a stat value. What you can do is you can multiply that value by another value to go into the rotation. Now, we're obviously using um, Euler value. So rotation inside of the math side of Blender is different to rotations in the actual workspace of Blender. If you want to rotate something 90 degrees around the, or 180 degrees or 270 degrees around the Z axis, you basically type in 90, 180 or 270 just because it's it's nice, simple degree-based mathematics. But when you work inside of the math side in Blender, you work in radians, and radians are not values between zero and 360. They are values between zero and pi times two, because a radian of a circle is two pi. So in order to get a 90 degree rotation in the maths, you have to basically take two pi and divide it by four. And the value you get from that is 90 degrees, equivalent in the maths. So to make this value, this integer we have between 0 and 3, become 90, 180, or 270, we have to multiply it, not by 90, but by 2 pi divided by 4, otherwise known as pi divided by 2. It's maths. It's math. We're stuck with it. So basically what you can do is the best thing is you can actually type in pi divided by 2, pi divided by 2, and that will give you that value. So let's do that now. I want to multiply this output in here by 90. That would do the rotation. Yeah. But that doesn't, that isn't the value they want in there. We want it to be 1.571. And that is because essentially that's pi pi divided by 2, 1.571. And that's another way to do it. You can go pi, and that is 3.142. Let's go pi divided by 2. There you go. So those now are rotated randomly rather than all pointing all in the same direction. So we've got random scale and we've got random position. That's good. But I think my random scale now could do with having a little smaller size in there. So I'm going to change that to 0 0.05. And now we've got some teeny tiny ones there as well. But we're still, it's still quite hefty. We've still got a fair amount of stuff there, which is good. Now here's the best thing about geometry nodes, and I'm going to I'll leave it in EV, but let's go to layout here. I want to make this area bigger. So with geometry nodes, I just come back here. I just go over here. And I set my size to 50, to 50 by 50. And now I've immediately got more area, but I've still got the same size blocks. So that's just fab. Because the distribution of those points is nothing to do with the size. It's all about what we do here, which is just the business. So I can increase that seed value to make sure there's more of them, but I don't think we need to. Let's go back here to, yeah, if I just get rid of that, I like that. 
I like it a lot. So what I need to do now is add some water into the scene. So let's go, okay, let's go to modeling. Uh, let's uh, just turn off the visibility of the blocks. We don't need to see those, they're still gonna work. And if I just go edit mode, and let's change it to here. Let's turn off the semi-transparency. Still, we're still chucking things around. Such a beautiful machine. And I will stop talking about it now. I'm gonna add a mesh and I'm gonna add a plane, just add a plane, and I'm gonna scale it by 40. Okay, so I'm then gonna lift this up like this until we start to get that kind of like watery kind of feel. There we go. And now we can go into shading and have a little look at this. Now, let's go to the rendering on this. And I'm going to have to go back to cycles because it's the only way we're gonna get this to work beautifully is to go into cycles. So into cycles we go. Rendering nice and quick so far. Let's just do a save as and make this um, B002. And hopefully this isn't gonna to be too long. We're already at about 27 minutes. Um, I may be editing a bit out of it, of course. Um, and let's go save. And very quickly, let's pick our water. Let's put our plane into collection three. We'll call this land stuff. Okay. And I'm going to add to this, I'm gonna to add it to the cube, not the cube, we're going to add to the plane. So I'm going to call water if it gets me. There we go. Water and cube. Let's just recall. Let's rename that to land blocks. Okay. I go to our water. Let's add a shader to this. Uh, let's turn this IOR down to 1.15, for example. Uh, set the transmission up to 1. And the problem we have, it looks all gray, and that's because by default, everything has uh, shadowing. So obviously water isn't gonna cast a shadow, so we need to go to the object itself, and we need to go to shading, not shading, sorry. We need to go to visibility, and we want to turn off shadows. And there you go, now we're not getting shadows of the water. What you can see as well is we're getting a depth kind of a thing, which is kind of what we get in the other one, which is great. Now what we're gonna do now is just make sure that we are getting something that we want which is more appropriate to the actual color. So I'm gonna increase the roughness, I'm gonna increase the specular, and I'm gonna pick on the base color, and I'm gonna very gently push it a little bit into the bluey greens. A bit more green, there we go. So, and also we've still got this lovely, uh, lovely land kind of stuff over here which is all, all fine and dandy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take the land blocks and the best way to do this is in fact, go into the blocks themselves, Let's turn them on, and I'm going to add a new shader to this block. I'm gonna call it block stuff. Shader, because silly names <clears throat> are my favorite thing. And I'm gonna apply it to the other two as well, because this will work, I promise and there you go block shader and then here we go i've got my shader and let's just angle this a bit more let's just try and get in a bit closer to make it a little bit quicker okay that, that water's quite nice like that um and let's go into our base color and i'm going to add into here what i always do which is the color ramp input object info and random there we go. So that's now given us a random color per object. Now, obviously that's too extreme a color change. I don't want that. So I'm gonna pick that one. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna give that a little bit of yellow. Kind of a, sort of a very pale honey color. Let's add another one in the middle and get rid of you. Bring this all the way down to there. So we've got somewhere a bit more mid-rangey. And I'm going to change the hue of this. Just maybe a little bit over that side. Hmm, maybe a bit too much. Let's pop it there. Yeah, so it's kind of still, it's a similar color. There's a little bit more, a little bit more red in it. And that, I quite like that actually. So there we go. So that's now 
inside of those. And we're kind of getting to what we want to see now. It's got that sort of the feel is definitely getting there. I'm just going to go to the light, sunlight again. And let's pop it open. I'm going to, going to basically put the strength to four. So that's brighter, but we've got those nicer, nicer hard shadows in there, which is nice. So I'm just going to save this again to be absolutely certain we're going to work. I'm going to change this now basically back to modeling. And the reason for that is because I want to be able to see the land. Uh, I don't want to be looking at the rendering so much. I just want to be able to see that where the land is. Because the one thing we are now missing, of course, is the buildings. And I have those as assets. I've already built some buildings as assets. So I'm going to bring those and chuck them in. There we go, and let's have a look at uh, let's look at the shading. I do not have a problem with that at all. So if we just look very quickly, if I just move this across to here, I'm gonna very quickly bring in that picture again so you can see the similarity. I mean, yeah, there's what there probably is as well as extra shading and stuff to give that water that bit of depth in there. Um so but I mean let's just if I can fiddle with the water, I can probably make it more saturated. Oh dear, no, that's I've oh, just gone a bit too far. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Pop this back up. There we go. So that's kind of you know we're kind of kind of getting there, really. I mean, whew, can't complain. And it is I don't know. It's um, I'm quite I'm quite I'm quite pleased with the results. I'm going to render off a frame. I'm going to render off a proper frame. And let's do this let's go to rendering let's press f12 and there we have it that was 256 samples uh, that is just using the cpu and that took 47 seconds that's pretty good going let's just do another quick test i'm going to very quickly leave, go into slot two i'm going to change the rendering over to gpu we're going to do the same thing again let's hit f12 Okay, so that was almost 17 seconds. Uh, obviously, GPU rendering is always going to be quicker. But the fact that it is comparable, the actual Threadripper is comparable to the GPU, still staggers me. It is such, such a good machine. Um, listen, guys, this has, been, this has been emotional. It's been very emotional, actually. Um, there you go. I mean, I could go in to do a lot more detail, make more bits in it, put more stuff in it, and I probably will for the final image. But for now, you can see basically how we get to it from just nothing to the to the to this the Matthew Barrett sort of like almost not not exactly the same, obviously, but you know, there's there's some there's some level of similarity there going between those two. You know, in fact, I love my little buildings. I'm really quite pleased with those. Listen, have a wonderful life, everybody. It, we're having a wonderful summer. I'll just leave you with that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, uh, but uh, listen, if you haven't, by the way, have a look at the Lenovo P620. It is uh, a staggering piece of kit. Basically, it's like having 15 to 20 machines all in one jammed together. It's fantastic. Listen, take care, guys. I will see you in the next one. And uh, just look after yourselves and have a great life. And uh, yeah, right, get out there and do stuff when the sunshine, while it's out there. Woohoo! Uh, take care, guys. Uh, look after yourselves and bye. <laughs>